Hello. Uh, welcome back to our uh, lecture sessions on uh, electrical power quality. So this is Professor Umar Rao from RV College of Engineering, Bengaluru, bringing you the lectures under the e section of program of VTU. So in my last session, I uh, spoke about the distributed generation concept. And uh, we saw three kinds of uh, you know, distributed generations that are possible using reciprocating engines, using combustion engines, and fuel cells. Uh, in this session, we will see two very important renewable uh, sources for distributed generation. So the first one is using wind turbines. So wind turbines, the prime mover is uh, the turbine and the input to that is the wind power. There are many geographical locations across the world where we have sufficient of wind uh, velocity to run a turbine. So generally for wind turbines, we require velocity at least around six to eight meters per second. And it's a very advanced technology today. In fact, you can have a whole course itself on wind power generation. I'm sure you have all seen something like this, these wind turbines when you travel along the countryside. So in Karnataka, you have many wind turbines, farms near Chitradurga. So there are different designs for the blade. So you have two blades, you have three blades, and you have four blades. But most of them, they go with three blades with, with a certain angle. This is to give the system a kind of stability. So you see when the turbine rotates, when the wind turbine rotates, so sometimes it will have to go against the direction of the wind. And the wind forces may hit the blades also. So based on the momentum all this uh, causes, uh, generally it has been found that three blades are the best design, though do, some others also do exist, like two and four. Uh, if you look at India, as on February 2021, the total wind power generation was 38.78 gigawatts, huge as such. Onshore. Onshore means on land. So there are offshore wind plants, wind farms, because out in the sea or ocean, you know, you get very good wind breeze. So there are offshore, but we do not have in India. So the largest uh, uh, producer of wind power is uh, China with around 288 gigawatts. Next is USA. There's a huge difference. It's about 122 gigawatts. And then Germany with around 63 gigawatts and India stands in the fourth place. Generally, a wind farm has a capacity of around 200 to 500 megawatts. So you don't have one, like, you know, if you have a thermal plant and you want to generate 500 megawatts, you will have one huge turbine alternator you can have for 500 megawatts. That's not normally done uh, with wind. Right, that uh, you cannot have that kind of huge power generation. So wind turbines, individual turbines are normally in the range of around 700 to 1200 kilowatts. And uh, a number of them are aggregated into a wind farm. So typically from a wind farm, you can generate around 200 to 500 megawatts. And uh, there are some farms with smaller ratings like three to five megawatts which uh, address the needs of a local uh, uh, community or uh, say like a sky resort or some application. Okay, or you may have a sanctuary, a wildlife sanctuary uh, where there is good wind. So for such cases, you can have smaller farms also. The large farms normally, they are interconnected to the transmission system, not the distribution system because the voltage can be high here. You can get higher voltage 
and uh, they are, the wind power is evacuated at higher voltages. So it's very simple, just like in your thermal plant, you have a turbine which acts as the prime mover and which runs the generator shaft. Same thing here. In a thermal plant, you use steam as the input to the turbine. In a hydel plant, you use water. And uh, here we use the wind velocity, right? So, you know, you as children, we would all use the stick with um, uh, a turbine kind of a paper. And if you just keep it against the wind, it starts rotating. As simple as that. That's exactly what happens. And just think that that stick is a shaft. And if you connect the shaft to the shaft of an alternator, it will start rotating. And it will generate electricity. So that is what it is. Uh, with wind turbines, the main problem, uh, power quality, because we're all discussing from a power quality perspective, the main issue with uh, power quality would be voltage regulation. That means the changes in the voltage as the load varies. Generally, these wind farms, they're located, uh, you know, like I have a wind farm and I connect it to the grid, right? So I won't have any other connections around that. So the impedance will be high. As we parallel many lines, the impedance will come down. Clear? So when the impedance is high, what happens? Even small changes in current will lead to large changes in the drop. I Drop is I into X. So there will be large variations in the voltage. So this might be difficult to manage. So this is one of the main power quality problems. And wind farms have to take care of it by uh, improving the voltage regulation. Since it's a prime mover, I need a generator with it. So uh, the commonly used uh, generators with the uh, wind turbine are the conventional squirrel cage induction machines or wound rotor machines, three-phase squirrel cage or wound rotor. And, uh, but here you need reactive power because you know, remember the induction motor is, machine is going to act as a generator. So we have to supply reactive power. So you may have to, uh, you know, provide it with capacitors uh, to generate the sufficient reactive uh, power. Otherwise it may draw the reactive power from the grid and the voltage uh, at that point uh, may be, uh, may fall. Uh, recently, doubly fed induction machines, they're called as uh, DIGs doubly fed induction generators, DFIGs, they are becoming popular and uh, they use power converters to control the reactive power. And we can use also non-power frequency generation that requires an inverter interface, right? So with using this induction machine or uh, machines, I will generate the power at the required frequency, the grid frequency, Without that, you can also use inverters. You can use inverters as an interface to the grid. So wherever we have wind farms, there is a certain amount of power electronic devices which will be present. And uh, apart from voltage regulation, these can also cause harmonic problems. They can also cause harmonic problems. So wind turbines, they have uh, inertia because the turbine is a moving turbine. But it is again a very unreliable source because wind, it all, the power depends on mainly on the predominantly on the wind speed. And the dependence is not linear. It's a nonlinear function. So very difficult to exactly predict or forecast what would be the wind power. That would depend on how accurately you can forecast the wind speed. So I told you in my previous session, forecasting means using past data, I estimate some quantity in the future, right? So this is one of the problems with the wind power. Next renewable, very, very popular renewable source is the photovoltaic systems. And uh, in short, called as PV. Here it is very simple. It converts the light to electricity. So they use a special kind of a diode called as photodiodes. So light is made of photons. We all know that and photons contain energy. 
proportional to the frequency of the light. So when this photon is impingent on the diode, then uh, current starts flowing. So today, most of the solar cells are made with silicon. Of course, germanium is also becoming popular. And as I told you, when it started in the 1950s, the efficiency was as low as around 1%. But that itself created a revolution because our input raw material is free, the energy of the sun. But today, you know, the technology is very, very mature, and we have uh, we have reached efficiency efficiencies of around 30, 35 percent, which is very good considering the input is free. Okay, and so we know we have small cells where the voltage may be around 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts. And these cells are arranged into arrays. That means groups of series and parallel. So when I connect it in series, I increase the voltage. When I connect it in parallel, I increase the current uh, capacity. Okay. And the beauty of these solar PV panels are that you have a wide range, wide, wide range of um, ratings. And uh, today all over the world, we have about 583.5 gigawatts of solar power, installed solar capacity. So China stands first, followed by Japan, USA, Germany, and India is in the fifth place. We have about 34.8 megawatts. And I think you all know that the government is encouraging rooftops and encouraging people to go in for uh, uh, PV installations. So look at this, what a wide variety you have. So the solar panels can be located on top of the house, okay? And uh, you can generate sufficient for your load. And if it's in excess, we can supply it back to the grid. The second picture is a commercial building. So you can have on the rooftop. Uh, in many institutions now, 500 kilowatts to 1000 uh, kilowatts is very common because campuses have a huge size and the roof space is really large. And this third one is actually, this is a farm. Here, uh, there is no other purpose. The land has been taken and solar panels have been installed only for generation of electricity. So there are many areas where you know you can't grow plants because the soil is not good, and, but you have enough of sunlight, etc. And so you can uh, have such solar farms. I'm sure you're all familiar with street lighting with solar. We have seen that. And you can even have a small lamp or a torch with solar. So you just see the wide variety of ratings which you can have with PV. And to me personally, this is what it makes very, very attractive, very, very uh, attractive. Uh, the issues with PV are, let us see, PV, first of all, it's a diode, so it generates DC and variable DC because the voltage will depend on the voltage, this is the power, will depend on the amount of sunlight incident on the panel. Okay. So it will provide a pro, produce a variable DC voltage. Now I can't use a variable DC voltage directly. So we have to make a steady DC voltage by using DC to DC converters. Normally buck boost converters are used. So I get a steady DC voltage and then we invert it. And after inversion, I get AC. So I can give that AC to local loads that is called a standalone, stand alone. Or I can synchronize the AC with the grid. I can synchronize the AC with the grid. So this is how the PV panel works. Now, in recent years, uh, people have started questioning why convert the DC to AC? Why not use DC itself? But you know, majority of our loads, like for example, we have the world has evolved around AC. So my fan, washing machine, refrigerator, uh, dishwasher, all these operate is air conditioners all operate on uh, AC. But however, we have a lot of electronic gadgets which work on DC. 
So you know what we are doing? We are again converting the AC to DC by using a rectifier. You take your laptop charger or your mobile charger so that AC is converted to DC and then that DC is uh, given to charge the batteries. So slowly people have started saying, let us shift to DC loads. Let us have DC fans, DC lights. Anyway, we have LEDs. So slowly, I think in the near future, to make the load compatible with DC, we'll start having DC loads and start using the DC directly instead of inversion. So the main PQ issues are harmonic distortions because of the presence of the inverter and transients, right? Because of the switching. So these two distributed generation technologies, they fall under the category of renewable energy because they use energy which is renewed, wind and solar uh, power with, which are um, you know available in plenty and this are distributed this fall under distributed generation because they can be located anywhere in the system 